These hurricanes are doing something weird. Welcome to the weather forecast on VTB TNA channel. Dear friends, we're going to look at your October 2025 weather forecast. Let's look at the current drought situation across the United States. There's a lot of drought going on in the west, especially from the Rocky Mountains west to the west coast. We're also experiencing some significant drought from the northeast up through Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, all the way down into the Tennessee River Valley, Ohio. Even back into some parts of the Mississippi Valley toward Arkansas and the Missouri foothills. We have an update for you on our double whammy situation in the Atlantic. We have two tropical storm systems right now. We're still tracking Umberto here. Wind speeds of 144 miles per hour. Category 4 storm, central pressure down to 938 millibars. Let's look at the first week of October, October 1st through the 8th. And you can see we have a little bit of a drop in pressure across the northern plains that's weaker. There's also a drop in pressure near the Gulf of Mexico. But overall, we're going to see a warmer weather pattern in the first week of October. Favoring southeast Canada here through the Midwest with some warmer air again spreading out into the southern plains. And that cold air that we're talking about is going to start to push into the Pacific Northwest. And that cold air is going to cool us down through the first week of October. In terms of precipitation, we could see a little bit of wetness here in the first week across parts of the upper Midwest and East, with a drier trend across Texas, Louisiana and New Mexico. But also some precipitation across the Pacific Northwest. As we get into the second week of October, from the 8th to the 15th, we're going to see a much stronger trough of low pressure forming across the West Coast, and that's going to move this ridge a little bit east, at least the center of that ridge axis. Towards the upper Midwest in the second week of October, that's going to push some of the warmer air east into the plains into the upper Midwest. With the remnants of the cold air from the first week pushing east, we're going to see some colder air and then some colder air as this trough of low pressure forms over the west coast. We'll see some drier air with some wetter conditions spilling into the central plains and back into the Rocky Mountains and the west coast. Where we'll see a stronger trough of low pressure from the Pacific Ocean spilling into the west coast in the second week of October from the 8th to the 15th. The precipitation trend will be erratic. We'll see some scattered showers and thunderstorms across the north-central United States as this trough of low pressure begins to move across the Pacific Northwest, eventually moving over the Rocky Mountains into the plains and then up into Canada. It could turn toward Florida and then into the western Atlantic. We'll have to keep an eye on it, especially in the first half of October. The climatology also supports the possibility of some storms in that time frame there. The wildfire risk continues. I think the second half of October could be very dry in the upper Midwest. And our severe weather trend will continue primarily in the Mississippi Valley. Particularly the lower Mississippi Valley as we move deeper into October and even up the southeast coast if any storms make landfall. And obviously, the risk of frost and freeze will be there early across the upper Midwest in the Great Lakes. We've seen that in some spots this fall. We'll continue to monitor this region for the risk of frost and freeze going forward, even into October, especially the second half of the month if we get a big cold front like we've talked about. That's a possibility in the upper Midwest with frost and freeze. We also have a tropical storm over the Bahamas right now with winds of 50 miles per hour and a very dense cluster of thunderstorms developing over that central depression. Oh my gosh! You're under tropical storm watches and warnings all along the east coast of Florida. We're going to have some severe swell. We're going to have some wind and some thunderstorms for a while. But overall, we're not going to have any significant tropical storms in Florida. Georgia, South Carolina or North Carolina as the storm continues along its track, which we're expecting to make a very sharp turn to the east as Humberto pulls it along. Well, almost as I'm uploading this. 
So you can see that we're going to have storms continuing to pop up around that central depression. Most of them will be offshore, but I think the heaviest rain in Florida will be between now and mid-afternoon. Everything else is going to be pretty tightly confined around the central low. There will be very little impact along the U.S. coast as the storm continues to move north and east. Here you can see that there will be a lot of rain-free time in Charleston, South Carolina as the storm moves north and east. So we expect that wind shift to continue in the direction of the wind toward South Carolina. In terms of precipitation, things look much quieter than they were a few days ago. Remember, just a few days ago, we thought we might have another major flood in the Corollas due to this storm. But that's a very complex forecast and things have changed so much that now we're looking at maybe an inch of maximum rainfall across all of North Carolina. There are a few places here near Wilmington that could get over two inches. Who knows, the heaviest rain will probably fall between Daytona Beach and Palm Bay in Florida. And we'll get into what's going on in the tropics right now. Right now, just off the coast of Florida, we have Tropical Storm Alda, which is expected to become a hurricane later today. And actually, as we get deeper into the later part of the day today and as Alberto continues to move north, we're going to start to see Alda start to strengthen. They're in a relationship right now. We have Alda to the west. And then, just east of Alda, we have Alberto. These two storms are flirting with each other. They're very close together right now. And Alberto will continue to move north over the next 24 hours. And eventually it's going to move out to sea. Notice how close it is to Bermuda. With Alda, much of the outflow from Alda has actually traveled as far north as Ohio, New York, and up into New England. We've also had some rain across the Corollas over the last couple of days from Alda. And right now is the closest that both Alda and Alberto will be to each other before they essentially split apart, as Alberto will move rapidly north and northeast over the next few days. Away from Alda, Alda will be left alone in the extreme western Atlantic for the next few days as it continues to move east. However, we will likely see Alda impact Bermuda as we head into Thursday where we could actually see hurricane force winds, along with the potential for heavy rainfall that could cause flooding. So again, Alberto and Alda will likely come back together as we get closer to Thursday. And finally, as we head into late Thursday into Friday, Alberto will move rapidly northeast and then head out into the northern Atlantic. There is also a small chance that it could try to turn south again and move down here. So again, I'm not really worried about anything for the United States other than Alda or Alberto. But it's a very rare thing for both Alberto and Alda because over the next couple of days, these low pressure systems are going to be so close together that we're almost going to see them merge into one. We finally saw some of the outer bands come into eastern Florida last night. There were also some gusty winds, we're going to continue to see a little bit more rain across the Corollas in Virginia. That's from some strong outflow coming from Alda. But overall, no tornadoes. No heavy rain that's going to lead to really significant flooding. Now, the Carolinas, both North and South Carolina, Georgia and Florida, are seeing some scattered, fast-moving showers. And be careful again with some very high wave showers. We've had some heavy rain in a few places over the last few days. Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic. Oh wow, nothing as unusual as the Dominican Republic, just a little bit more. So, Haiti will be back to Cuba with some heavier rain. Areas of heavier rain in Central America. And then on Friday, we could see the rain increase towards the Cayman Islands and Jamaica. So we'll be monitoring that. There will continue to be some fast-moving showers. But fortunately, the heaviest rain will come from the northern Bahamas, where we need scattered Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic and Jamaica. If there are storms, we could see up to 50 millimeters or 5 centimeters of rain. Rain may or may not be from the Dominican Republic back to Puerto Rico. The British Virgin Islands and Guilla, St. Martin, St. Bart, 
Saint Caneva, Antigua, Barbuda to Dominica, rain may or may not be. We'll be tracking some parts of Central America with still heavier rain. With totals in the 100 plus M range, we'll be tracking Texas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, the Florida Panhandle, and then still moving up the coast, North and South Carolina. With some scattered showers throughout the day. So Jamaica over the next couple of days, we'll have the potential for scattered showers and storms. We'll have some light showers around Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados. As we get into the weekend, we'll see more moisture creep in. We'll see that as we head towards St. Lucia as well. Some of the moisture that's lingering in the Atlantic will lift off. The chance of scattered showers in the British and U.S. Virgin Islands drops to just 20% tomorrow. The Bahamas are again scattered showers, but unfortunately Alda is finally leaving, although heading towards Bermuda, the chance of rain in the Turks and Sows is 30%. If you like this video, please share it with your friends, family and on social media. Comment in the comments section below the video. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel to follow. Thank you for watching the news on VTB TNA channel.